Now, <clears throat> you watch that clip, I mean, you could look at plenty of other Archie Bunker clips um, in a quick Google search. Actually, I, I Google searched Archie Bunker equal time, and you see all, this whole list of um, Archie Bunker on Democrats, Archie Bunker on equal pay for women, and again, it's these very narrow perspectives, stereotype, you know, stereotypical bigoted perspectives um, that Norman Lear in All in the Family destroys, um, makes him look like a fool, just like he did in him advocating for gun, uh, no gun control, right? Give everybody a pistol, um, you know. Anyways, so South Park, in terms of carnivalesque, really embraces the low language of the marketplace. The idea that when you're, at, you know, at the market, and we're thinking, you know, not the supermarket, but like the market was a place where you could drink and you could dance, you could curse, you know, you could just act differently. It was a place where people came together to celebrate, um, specifically in like the medieval European markets, okay? Um, but carnivalesque, really, and the element of a carnival is about, you know, flattening um, of of power structures, inverting power structures. Again, the peasants become kings and queens, and the kings and queens become peasants. And, um, you know, I think the important part is that South Park mark, mocks, you know, um, the elite, however you want to think about that, celebrities, any type of elite, they mark, mock, excuse me, you know, uh, 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 the traditions and the values of those at the top of, of the hierarchy, you know, in so many ways, or at least try, you know, um, and often mimic and mock the official language used, used by them. I think Kanye West serves as a great example um, in, in The Hobbit, looking at the, the hawks flying over my head. I got some vultures too classic um okay so uh you know it's someone ripping on their fucking motorcycle um but basically you know the idea of of of, of carnival is that it's participatory that everybody gets to participate it's not like it's class based that everybody gets to enjoy an element of carnival so you know south park does have that sort of element where it does appeal to multiple ideologies i mean think about it you know, yeah, you watch a, you know, we'll watch an episode of Douche and Turd, and is it making fun of, you know, Republicans or, or liberals? Or, we'll, you know, we could watch, uh, you know, the episodes about, like, Obama and when Obama won, and, you know, is that about, you know, liberals or conservatives? Who's it a critique on? Well, it's kind of on everybody. You know, the joke's obviously on every, on everybody, and that's why South Park has a sort of a, a larger appeal. But the idea of carnival, right, is that you, you go to these carnivals, right, in that at the end of a carnival, whether it's Burning Man or Mardi Gras, whatever it is, you're supposed to come out with a new outlook on life, that it's supposed to cleanse your your mental palate in such a way where you see things differently and so the kind of the the thing with South Park as carnivalesque is that maybe you watch an episode and you have a dialogic moment where you rethink you know a notion that you held about the world or makes you think about you know some social issue in just a different way it may not change your perspective but it may change how you 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 think about it and how you view it these vultures are flying right over my head. I wonder if they, they think they're going to cop a meal off of me. Anyways, um, I think the important part is that, you know, South Park as carnivalesque recognizes that TV is, is part of heteroglossia, right? And this is an important term that we'll talk about next class, but basically is this, is that texts like South Park, like movies, like music that, that we watch, right? They are dialogic in meaning that there is no actual meaning. That meaning is not created by an author who created the text. The meaning's authored by us, that we make the meaning. So I'll talk more about heteroglossia um, when we talk about intertextuality in our next class. But I can't believe it. We are almost through week two, day one. So almost, you know, we've made it through a week and some. So, um, but I think if you want to think really about South Park as carnivalesque, we can look at some elements here, right? We have grotesque bodies, uh, Cartman, uh, the Jewsians, um, 
I mean, Snooki. I, just, just so many ex- examples uh, as you watch episodes where you see when they're mocking people how they make them look grotesque and disgusting, right? Um, they're always making fun of authority figures, always celebrities, pol- politicians, and their perspectives and the discourses that are you know guide them and 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 that they help create as well. Okay. We obviously have tons of scatological humor. Ton, I mean, tons and tons of shit jokes, right? And the idea here is, you know, every, everybody, everybody shits. The famous people, the beautiful people, right? Politicians, everybody shits. But this, this scatological humor is there to sort of be applied to and deconstruct dominant discourses, right, in the world. Ideas and views to sort of undermine them and invert them, right? These serious issues in society, South Park tries to sort of deconstruct to give us a new perspective on them, okay? Um, the boys are often presented with a situation, and this is kind of, you look at the arc of most episodes, the boys are presented with a situation, and guess who are the stupid fucks in South Park? The adults. The boys are often, like, smarter, you know, and their parents are so, so stupid, just so stupid and that's just an important part of the episode that mocks adults as authority figures for kids because adults maybe don't know everything right and that's really important so the the adults usually get excessive and make things worse they're all going to become atheists you know like they're all going to protect their children from child abductors or, or whatever it is you know um, and it's the adults who, who, who make, make things worse, you know, through their excessive um, viewpoints, okay? And what always happens is that, you know, what South Park does is they take these larger social issues and they present them as a threat to the sort of balance and stability in this, you know, white rural town with a, you know, a sort of, um, you know, myopic, white, rural, very narrow viewpoint of, of the world. So South Park, you know, there's some, something that always invades, invades this, this, this small town and the small town viewpoint, which I think is a, is an important part. So, I mean, if you want to see a great example, um, of like, carnivalesque on South Park uh, the douche first turd is perfect and we'll watch that episode here in a few weeks but you know where they present you know our, our political presidential candidates as a giant douche or a turd sandwich um, you know they also uh, mock PETA as being you know uh, so dogmatic and authoritarian about um, animal love that they actually really love animals and then obviously um, the role of celebrities in politics, so they um, the vote or die thing. But we'll watch that in a few weeks so we can get into that. Um, just, just some quotes from the reading that I thought was really good. I'm going to read this out. You know, rather than articulating a consistently conservative liberal voice, South Park's carnivalesque mode creates a space for viewers to engage in multiple social discourses from a variety of poli- political subjectivities while undermining the supposed legitimacy of those discourses so that's so so important is that South Park kind of kind of destroys us all um, and depending on your your viewpoint in the world is how you're gonna read into that 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 carnival and how you're gonna read into that satire and again you may see douche first turd and think it's a critique on liberals because they they yeah they lambaste uh, PETA and, um, you know, but you may also see that as a, a lampooning of, 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 um, of conservatives, you know, depends on your perspective. In this sense, South Park often tends to be like kind of in the middle, which maybe makes some of us feel um, uncomfortable, but that's also a little bit to do with their sort of libertarian viewpoint in politics. Um, but the idea here is by staying sort of in the middle, they try to show and this is going to become so important for us um, as we move around in the term, is to show the ridiculousness of excessiveness. The, not only excessive consumption and things like that, but excessive and dogmatic viewpoints, extremist viewpoints, which they're always trying to um, destroy. It's a major part of it. So how are those extremist views just completely ridiculous? All right. So we are going to watch an episode now, and we'll kind of leave it here with the Jeffersons. 
Um, now think about the grotesque body, think about carnival in this, think a little bit about satire and parody. So the main arc here is obviously we have um, you know, Michael, Je uh, Je Michael Jefferson, right, which is Michael Jackson, um, you know, and so we have so many product moments of things that Michael did on TV where he holds his child over a balcony, these real life events, you know, all this stuff. Um, and then we have like a side, a side narrative too, where um, they're talking about cops, um, you know, framing wealthy African Americans. So at the time, um, you know, we had just kind of gone through the O.J. Simpson trial. Um, we had gone through um, um, the uh, Kobe Bryant um, trial or accusations. Didn't actually go to go to trial. Um, and also, Mike, Michael Jackson was one of the many times that he had been accused of sexually abusing children. So that becomes a, a, a major part um, in, in this story. But obviously, at the end, we see how Michael is a grotesque, incomplete body. Um, but just watch this. Think about the, the use of scatological humor in this episode. Um, think about, you know, how Carnival is used in this episode to make a sort of, like you know, um, rethink s several things here, but what is the object and subject of critique? What's the satire here? I want you to sort of stew on that, ruminate on that. Enjoy the episode. It's the Jeffersons. Uh, I'm feeling good. I'm going to kind of uh, leave it here, um, and hopefully we'll see you at happy hour. So if we want to talk about this stuff, um, we can do that certainly at happy hour. Stay tuned. Next class, we'll be talking about intertextuality and small town stereotypes. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying uh, happy and healthy, uh, keeping your hands clean and social distancing like a motherfucker. I am the real Dr. Dre on the pooper, right? Um, and I'm out. I'll check you next class. Pace.